Thank you and welcome everyone to this session. And uh, we'll begin now. I hope um, everybody can hear my, my voice and everybody can see my screen. And um, if not, uh, there is a um, question section. You can utilize that question section. You can ask your questions in the question section uh, if you have any questions. Again, I welcome you all to this um, SAP production planning introduction club. So in this uh, session today, uh, first for 40, 45 minutes and so, I will uh, talk about what is SAP production planning module is, what kind of functions, what kind of processes, what kind of elements are included, incorporated in part of SAP production planning. So that is the first part of uh, our uh, our agenda is. Uh, second agenda basically is uh, in the last, we will take few minutes to ask any questions. So we'll have uh, some of the technical question which you might be having. So that is the second thing we will do uh, in the later part of conversation. So first of all, much, um, thank you. And let me briefly introduce myself. So I'm doing SAP since 1998. So it is almost uh, well, 24, 25 years. Uh, many, many years I've been doing SAP. And um, primarily in my past experiences, I worked with three companies. Uh, I was associate partner with IBM in the US. Uh, I was a senior director with Accenture and Capgemini in the US. I did many, many implementations. So many of them are in US and you know outside of US and Europe and India and all that. Now, um, obviously I do not work anymore. And uh, I have decided a few years back to focus completely on academics. The reason for that was that, um, you know, um, if you are um, uh, teaching in the parallel and you're doing a full-time job, then it's not, you just cannot uh, focus. You cannot just really help your students after training. Now, training part is simple. You can, anybody can do training in the Saturday and Sunday or weekends and all that, but helping them, you need to have a full-time availability. So a few years back, I decided that I need to focus completely on helping my students during the class and after the class. So I don't do any full-time job at all. So some people ask me how many thousand people I have taught. I don't know. So how many people I have taught. I lost count. You know, you, you, you make a count. So how many people I have taught. And uh, again, I welcome everyone uh, to the session today. So, um, uh, Reja, welcome. Varun, welcome. Sunil, uh, welcome. Uh, Jia, welcome. Uh, Sagar, welcome. Vishal, welcome. Satish, welcome. Prasanna, welcome. And Anuradha, welcome. So, uh, I welcome you all uh, for coming to this quick session um, on SAP production planning module. Now, before I jump into uh, uh, SAP production planning, so uh, some brief uh, pointers and introductions about SAP. So SAP is the name of a company, by the way, That's because a lot of people say, I want to learn SAP. Well, you're not learning SAP, you're learning a product of SAP. Now, one very interesting phenomena is that SAP is a very old company. We see the 1972. Yeah, so it's, that basically means it's a very, very old company. Most of IT companies are, you know, one decade or two decade old. And then uh, you see so many thousand customers, 291,000 customers in 190 country and all that, all that and all that. So that basically means um, if you make a list of, of you know, top 2000 uh, Fortune uh, 2000 company, 87% uh, of them uh, in one way or another use SAP. So it's a very clear dominance 
of SAP in uh, almost all different industries. And uh, 190 countries basically means um, almost every country in any continent, whether it's America or Europe or Africa or Asia or, uh, you know, South America or whatever. So it's practically, I myself did SAP implementation in uh, several countries. Now, before uh, we jump into SAP uh, production planning module, <clears throat> so let us understand this portfolio of SAP products. Now, if you look at this slide, it's a very busy slide. It, it, there are many things on it, but I would like to draw your attention to uh, in the center of this slide, we have something called SAP ERP. ERP means Enterprise Resource Planning. So when we are talking about SAP or learning SAP, in most cases, in most cases, we are talking about learning this product, which is called ERP, Enterprise Resource Planning. This is the central product. So when I say that 87% of Fortune 2000 company use SAP, we are talking about this product, which is called SAP ERP. ERP means Enterprise Resource Planning. Now, it also have many other product. It's a CRM, which is Customer Relationship Management. It has SCM, which is Supply Chain Management. Uh, PLM is Product Lifecycle Management. SRM is Supp Supplier Relationship Management. SAP Marketplace. BI means Business Intelligence. Uh, EP means Enterprise Portal. SAP Financial. SCM basically means Human Capital Management. But this, <coughs> with this SAP ERP, this is the central product of SAP. Now, one more thing which I would like to bring your attention to, which you see on the top of it, which is SAP for industry. Now, what is the meaning of SAP for industry? So SAP is being used in 24 different type of industries, 24 different type of industries, 24. So like if you see here, aerospace and defense, automotive and pharmaceutical and retail and medical devices and, you know, oil and gas and energy and so on and so forth. So now what is the point here? The point here is that everybody use same SAP. But depending upon what industry it is, you end up using an industry solution for that company. Core SAP remain the same. Now there's one more phenomena, which, are, which is not on this slide, but I need to highlight, which is country solution. Now every country is different. So like, for example, if you're doing implementation in US, then uh, in US, US has its own laws. Its language is English. It has its own taxation, its own commercial legal uh, framework. But if you go to next door in Canada, then you have, a, you know, this is in uh, their, they, they use English in France. They have their own taxation. They have own the legal and framework. Now, how do you incorporate all of them? And if you go to the other side of the border, then there is Mexico, which is using uh, you know, Spanish and other languages. So the answer to that question is that SAP also have something called country solutions. Now, here, if you see, there is a, something called SAP NetWeaver. NetWeaver basically means this is SAP's platform. This is where SAP lives, the software lives. Now, let us talk about the evolution journey of SAP. So let us understand this slide also. So I had mentioned <coughs> that SAP started its journey in 1972. So, which is almost 51 years. But these are the four fundamental incarnations. So if you see the four fundamental products or versions, like, you know, in our day-to-day -day life, we see Windows, Windows 11 and Windows 10 and Windows 8 and Windows XP, Windows this, Windows that. They are different versions. It's a window, same window, right? But then there are different 
functions and features but fundamentally it is nothing but the windows same way if you see here on your slide then you have sap r2 then even r3 then you have erp and then you have sap s4 hana so sap r2 came in 1979 r2 because it is two layer architecture so it is called r2 because it is two layer architecture and uh, sap r3 is basically um, the most successful product of sap is called sap r3 so r3 <coughs> is a three layer architecture and uh, it is basically the central product of sap okay and then which came in 1992 r3 means three layer architecture r3 means three layer architecture If among all the products which sap has introduced sap r3 is the most successful product of sap if sap is sap with that dominance across the world it is because of this product which is called sap r3 then came sap erp which came in 2004 and uh, then in 2015 sap came with the fourth generation erp that is called sap s4 hana sap s4 hana works is a erp business application which runs on hana database now we come to production planning which is our agenda for today now in the production planning now let us understand this uh, <coughs> this uh, slide which and the uh, and in this slide if you look at it this is a certain colors hmm? and uh, there is a green color and red color and yellow color and purple color and all that now what does this really means so all different modules of sap erp are divided into these categories green means logistics this uh, red basically means different financial modules yellow means hr and this purple basically means different technical aspects so there is sales and distribution module materials management module production planning module quality management module plant maintenance module these are all logistics then there is a fine red color is finance like finance accounting controlling asset management project system yellow means hr then there is office and industry solutions and certain technical aspects now along with each of these module you will see this open boxes now what is this open box basically means open box basically means that in sap sap obviously is a pre written application so various functions and various processes various capabilities are defined assigned created in uh, in this module now having said that there there are two things one what is in the box so which basically means within the box we have a different modules and functions and capabilities so every module so in production planning we will see what kind of functions and modules and capabilities are being supported so the first thing is what is in the box the second part is what is their empty box which is you can extend the functions and functionalities and capabilities which are there in any module and you extend them by configuration so what do we learn in any module finance or sd or mm or pp or qm whatever different module we learn we learn two things one what is in the box and second how can we configure 
and extend what we have in the box. Now, we go to the production planning. Now, in the production planning, I hope uh, my voice coming to everybody and uh, you, can, you can all hear me properly. If any problem, message me and thank you. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so, thank you, everyone. I really appreciate you joining. Um, now, we're coming back to industry sector. So, SAP, as I mentioned in the beginning, 291,000 uh, customers and all that. And uh, I also mentioned that 87% um, of Fortune 2000 company use SAP. So that basically means you're talking about different companies. So SAP production planning can be used for different manufacturing approaches, methods, depending upon what kind of a company it is, engineer to order make to order, discrete manufacturing, making custom order, you get an order and you manufacture, assemble to order, we have a component, we are manufacturing a laptop and then we assemble and we sell it, repetitive manufacturing, production lot size, how much we manufacture, mass production basically means Many companies do mass production. We are creating 20,000 shirts. When I'm creating a 20,000 shirts, I'm creating a mass production. Process flow production. So process flow means going from one process to another process to third process and steps, you know, step one, step two, step three, step. One. So they are different work centers. Then there are some continuous flow. I'm taking the oil out. It's a continuous flow. So now I have a machine and it's taking oil out on the country. So that basically means SAP production planning module or any module for that matter can be used for different industries. I mentioned to you in the beginning that SAP being used in 24 different type of industries, automotive, aerospace and defense, pharmaceutical, biomedical, in energy, oil and gas, apparel and footwear, retail, wholesale distribution, and many more. Now, every company is different. The way you make shoes and the way you make aeroplane is different. The way you make medicines and the way you make an oil is different. That is why SAP production planning module is and can be used for different sectors, type of industries. These are some of them. Now, coming back to sales and operation planning, two words, sales. And the second one is operations. Now, sales is the Precursor of production. Why will you produce? Why will you manufacture? You will manufacture for production. Right? So here, if you look at this historical data, the logistic information system is SAP's own reporting tool. So from that, you can take historical data. Means how much we have produced, how much we have sold, what product we have sold and when, which category of the product, which group of product, we sold how much is North America versus South America versus Europe. Historical data. We might have some business planning. So there is an SAP COPA. COPA means controlling and profitability analysis. In that we can also create business planning. Business planning means what is my plan for the next one year, for six months, for two years. You can have a short term plan, mid plan and long term plan. That become the planning and then that become the basis for your sales and operations planning. So that now the two words sales and operations. What is the meaning of it? So based upon your forecast, you will plan, OK, how much you're going to sell in uh, in US? How much in the US you're going to sell in North and East and West? How you, do you have a salespeople? Do you have offices? Do you have a warehouses? Do you have a distribution center? 
and then operations. Do you have a trucks? Do you have a distributions? Do you have a distribution centers? Do you have manufacturing? That is all sales operation planning. And one, there is a, a independent requirement. Independent requirement basically means those are not related to any specific, uh, you know, we get from forecast. That's an independent requirement. I need this material based upon my forecast. Then I have a master scheduling. Master scheduling basically means based upon my planning, based upon my forecast, based upon my budget, we do master scheduling. And then what happened in master scheduling? We get a MRP. In the MRP, either we do production. Now see here, the two arrows are production or we do procurement. So this is sales operation plan. The second is the demand management. Demand. Demand. So ultimately, unless there is a demand, unless there is a need, there is nothing for production to do. Production is basically catering to certain demands. Now those demand sources could be multiple. So there is a demand management in SAP production planning. When we look at the demand management, in the demand management, you have a different things. First, coming from sales plan. So what is your sales plan? So your sales team, your marketing team, they're planning certain aspects that become that become sales plan. Production plan. What is your manufacturing based upon your particular forecast or is the sales demand? Your forecasting. Any other plan. And all of them goes into demand management. Sales demand from sales order. Many times we get in a specific sales order. And because we have a sales order, that is why from that sales order, we will be uh, creating our demand management. Then the right side, manual planned independent requirement, manual. So there's a planning department, they are seeing, they are saying, they are making a phone call, they find out that I need this material. Independent requirement, independent. They are not related to any sales order. I don't have any specific demand. Independent. We people make a call. Okay, what do you think you, you can say? Oh, I can do this. I think planned independent requirement. And then all of them goes to demand management. And then it goes to MRP, which is material requirement planning. And that become the basis for planning. There is another component in SAP production planning module that is called demand management. So first we talk about sales SOP. Then we talk about demand management. Then what is the production planning and execution? Okay. So what is the overall process for the production planning and execution? So let's look at this picture carefully. So we have a sales and operations planning we talked about. Then we talked about uh, this demand management in which uh, we can have a different kind of demands. There could be a demand related to independent requirement or there could be or planned independent requirement or there could be specific sales orders. Sales order is a demand. If I get a sales order from the customer, that is a demand. If I have an agreement with a customer, that is a demand. So these are the demands. And then after demand in SAP, there is something called planned order. Planned order is a intermediate document which become the basis for further procurement processes. That procurement could be internal, that procurement could be external. We may be buying the product because one more thing which you have to understand that when we say demand, ultimately the entire purpose of production module is to meet demand. Demand can be met in two different ways, internal or external. Internal means production, external means purchasing. Because a lot of companies are trading. Like in the US, not every company is doing manufacturing. Like Apple, Apple is not manufacturing anything in the US. 
So they get a sales demand. On the basis of the sales demand, they pass on the demand to their overseas manufacturing. And then overseas manufacturing is the one which is producing. So they're purchasing actually. And then we have a process manufacturing. In the process manufacturing, we can create process orders. In the base upon process orders, we can do uh, order execution. We can create delivery orders. We can do order settlement. See the costing, costing. So one other thing which happens from the order is the costing because the product cost, product cost come from production order. So different components, cost elements, which is part of production become basis for calculating costing. So that's where the costing come. And then obviously when you get demand, then uh, you know you integrate with the quality. You see the quality management. Quality basically means if you're producing the goods, somebody like to check the quality. In SAP, there's a quality management module. Delivery to stock. So that basically means product will come to inventory, product will come to warehouse, product will come to a store, and it become part of inventory. And then you will integrate and send it to. So we talked about. There is a sales operation planning. We talked about there's a demand management. We talked about production cycle. Now we are looking at something, other element, and that is called MRP. MRP basically means material requirement planning. MRP is a program. You can run MRP in different ways. Single planning, multiple planning, multi-level planning, and single material, multi-material and all that. <clears throat> so you can do the planning <clears throat> in a various different ways. And then based upon, see that here, net requirement calculation, net requirement. Net requirement calculation basically means, <clears throat> so I need a thousand pieces. Out of thousand pieces, I have a 200 in my stock. So net basically is 800. Lot sizing, lot sizing basic, there are different lot sizing procedure. So I need 1000 pieces. Do I need 1000 pieces in one lot or do I need 1000 pieces in five lots? So that is based upon lot sizing. Forecasting, so in SAP is a forecasting engine and you can create your sales demand forecasting. Order is scheduling and generation order is scheduling and generation so when you run mrp so one of the outcome of mrp is creation of sales production order and is scheduling of production order and then here we have a bomb explosion now what is this bill of material explosion basically means now look at this word bill of material explosion bill of material explosion basically means like the bombs has you know different structure there is a bomb main bomb there is an assembly bomb sub assembly bomb second assembly bomb third assembly bomb so within the bombs within the bill of material there could be many many sub bombs now explosion basically means that I am planning for every components. So think of a car, right? So when you're manufacturing a car, so car is a finished product, but within the car, there is an engine assembly. There is a gearbox assembly. There is a car seat assembly. There is a steering assembly, multiple assemblies. Within the assembly, there are Again, sub assemblies within the sub assembly, there is a further sub assembly, and then there are components. So, this is called multi level bombs. And within the, each bill of material, you can do explosion because you would like to do the planning to the last level. Planning to the last level. And that is what SAP does allow us to do the planning of the requirement to the last level. This is the view of MRP which we are talking about. Now let us understand this. So this is the MRP process which is there in SAP. So 
if we see sales and distribution processing, which basically means that we have a sales order. Sales order become by sales demand. I have a sales contract. That sales contract can become my sales demand. I can have a different kind of a sales orders that can become my sales demand. Mm -hmm. Then we have a, something called independent requirement. Independent requirements are not related to any order. That come as a that become the input to the MRP. How does MRP works? MRP is balancing demand and supply. So we need to do demand. So demand coming from sales, demand coming from plant independent repair, demand coming from reservations. Yeah? Some re reservation is required. Reservation basically means if I have a production order, if you look at it, and in that material, in the production order, if I need a component, that become my demand, that become my dependent requirement. System, to integrate all of them together. See the degree of integration. So many modules are converging here. See the power of integration. So production order I'm doing in, in production order, I need a component. I need a subcomponent. I need assembly. I need a sub assembly. That all become my reservation system. Create a document, separate document that is called reservation document. The reservation document become a demand, become part of MRP. When you run MRP, MRP creates something called planned order, and then you convert those planned order in two different things. Look at here. First, you convert, make or buy. Make or buy. If you have a requirement, if you have a demand, if you need a material, if you need a component, if you need a maintenance item, if you need a repair item, if you need a service item, if you need a packaging item, there are two possibilities to supply make or buy. So the planned order allows us to go to either path. You can denote that this material is my purchase item or this material is my internal procured item. SAP call it internal purchase or external purchase. So here on the right hand side, there is a purchase requisition, purchase required, purchase order, delivery schedule. So this is external procurement means I'm buying this material from my external supplier. On the left hand side, this is my item which I make in house. So in that I create a production order. I do my order processing. I do my capacity planning in SAP. There is also capacity planning because if you are trying to schedule an order, we need to have a capacity. I can't, if capacities are not there, my machines are not there, my work centers are not there, you cannot plan. And then one of the outcome of the production is final costing. Final costing basically means manufacturing gives me product costing. And then in the last we go to warehouse. So that basically means in the manufacturing we create different warehouse functions. So warehouse. Ultimately, we get material in our warehouse. Our demand is met. Discrete manufacturing. How does the discrete manufacturing look like? Is my voice coming to you all? Can you just, I just want to say yes and no on question. Just want to check. Thank you, Vindhya. Thank you, Sam. And good to everybody joining. Is my voice coming? Okay. Um, yes, Vishal. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Great. Just want to check sometime uh, my voice coming or not coming. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Now let's continue. So discrete manufacturing. So SAP manufacturing or production planning module 
support discrete manufacturing. What is discrete manufacturing? So in the discrete manufacturing, we have a work center one, work center two, work center three. So you manufacture here, after that it go to next work center, it go to third work center. So that is why it's called discrete manufacturing. Then you can have a different uh, function, repetitive manufacturing. So repetitive manufacturing, for example, you are manufacturing, you know, some chemical. So there's a production line goes to in within the production line. It goes to the next line is a repeat manufacturing. Now in the repeat manufacturing, if you see, look at here, there's make to stock. And there's a make to order. Now look at here, make to, if you see make to order, make to order basically means I have an, a specific order for a specific customer. So when I'm doing my manufacturing for a specific order, for a specific customer, that is called make to order. If I am doing manufacturing based upon my demand management, not specific to any order. I have a forecast, I have this demand, I have that demand, and I compile all this demand and put into the one bucket and I do my planning and do the production. In that case, I'm doing my make to stock. It's not related to any specific order. If you see here, in the bottom, there is a specific sales order. And we are manufacturing to a specific sales order. In fact, sales order number get linked to that item. So sales process and manufacturing process get seamlessly integrated. So I'm manufacturing this item for this customer. So I'm manufacturing car. You're not manufacturing car for any, any customer. You're manufacturing, you know, for the demand. If you're manufacturing aeroplanes, more than likely you're manufacturing an aeroplanes for some specific order some specific specifications. So repeat manufacturing or other manufacturing can be made to stock or can be made to order and you can support both. This is the manufacturing cycle. So now let's understand this. Manufacturing cycle. So here we talked about, we have a, Sales and operation planning, we discussed that. There are many components to that. So that is the in its point. From sales and operation planning, then we go to demand management. We take the demand from sales, from this, and the plant independent and all that. So next point is demand management. Then we go to long-term planning. So long-term planning basically means you can plan for next uh, six months, one year, two years, so long-term planning. And then we have a master production is scheduling. So now we have a, our planning. We know that what I need, how many orders we need to do, how many material, how many quantity of each of the material is required. And for that, we have to do master production scheduling. And after master production is scheduling, ne the next thing which we do is called material requirement planning or MRP. We run MRP and from MRP, the next thing which you do, production control. Production control means we create a production order, we release production order, we manage production, the entire production order cycle. Production order has a different cycle, different functions, and then we work on those different cycle and functions, okay? And then we have, a, we do the settlement. Settlement basically means we see what is the total cost which is included, incorporated as a part of the production order. So we have settlement of the cost. So that is the manufacturing cycle. There is a, another element that is called master manufacturing planning and execution. Manufacturing. 
planning and execution. Now look at this slide. Now let's look at this process flow and this picture carefully. So here we talked about that we can have make to order, make to stock. So there is sales and distribution. So sales and distribution means I have a specific order from a customer that become my sales requirement. On the left hand side, we have something called material forecast. So in SE, there is a forecasting engine. Forecasting basically means based upon your past consumption that in last six months or last one year, how much you have consumed and that become your material forecast. And that all of them goes to something called demand management. And from the demand management, we go to material requirement planning. When you do the material requirement planning, then we system create a planned order. Planned order is an intermediate document. Now planned order can go into external procurement or it can go to internal manufacturing, make or buy. So planned order can be converted if that item is externally procured because when you run MRP for a bill of material, bill of material might have a hundred items. Some are internally manufactured, some are externally procured, some are coming from this vendor, some are coming from that vendor, some, some assemblies we are manufacturing in-house. So hundreds of items which is going into one bill of material, they have a different situation. So that is why they have multiple, multiple paths. So here we can have purchase requisition, purchase requisition can be converted into purchase order, purchase order can be converted to good receipt and invoice receipt. This is the purchase cycle. <clears throat> If I'm planning to manufacture that item in house, so then planned order will be converted to production order. Then production order will be, we do something called order processing. Order processing basically means verifying order and release of the order, confirmation of orders, and then checking the work orders and work centers. And there is something called routing, which is different stages. All of them is part of order processing. After order processing, the next is goods receipt, which basically means we receive the material from the production into our warehouse. And then we do something called order settlement. Order settlement basically means every time when we manufacture, there is a cost. There is a material cost. There is a labor cost. There is a machine cost. There's overheads. So manufacturing components, manufacturing the item incur different type of cost. So we have to do the settlement of those costs. And when the material come into our warehouse, then what do we do? We do goods issue. Goods issue basically means once you finish good is manufactured, we send that goods to our customer and that become goods issue. Okay. That is what this basically is, this is what basically means. This is the manufacturing planning and execution process. Now, when we look into the production order cycle, so what are the different functions? What are the different components which we have in production? Let us understand them. So these are the different items which we have in production. So what, what does this really mean? Let's understand them. So here we have a, you see this order header, operations, components, PRT. This is a different kind of a, you know, tools and resources and production. You need machines and then cost. So in the production order, you have all these different functions in SAP. That is what this basically means. First and foremost, how this whole production cycle works. So let's look at this carefully. So the order proposal, order proposal basically means that MRP tells me that I need order. I need production order. So that is the starting point. Now production order 
can be created automatically from MRP or somebody can create manually also. Somebody say, oh, I need this material and somebody goes and create a production order. You can do that. Then order get created. Now this order get created manually also and order get created automatically also. In both methods, order can be created. So there is something, oops. So there is something called order creation. Then after order creation, the next is availability check. Availability check basically means when you're when when uh, you're doing manufacturing, you need components. Do you have those components? Do you have a raw material? Do you have items which is required? System do ATP check. Then there is something called capacity planning in SAP. There is also capacity planning. Based upon capacity planning, we can see that whether for certain product and all that we have a capacity or not. That is where the capacity planning come into the picture. Then once everything is good, we are good to go, we are good to manufacture, then we go to something called order release. Order release. Order release basically means finally we are releasing our order and we are starting our production that is called order release then we have an order print order print basically means we print our order so that is where order print come into the picture material withdrawal material withdrawal basically means the raw material components get consumed so that is where we have material withdrawal then we have execution. Execution basically means my production order is we create different activity, we confirm and there is a confirmation. Confirmation basically means let us say we said okay we're going to do this activity and we require five components. Do I really consume five components? Maybe more. I consume more. I said uh, I will be requiring uh, eight hours for this. Did I con consume eight hours or 10 hours? So that is called confirmation. Confirmation basically means confirming the actual conception of raw material and time of different manufacturing steps. Then after confirmation of production order, then we receive material in the production order warehouse receipt. Warehouse receipt means receiving the finished good from the production in the warehouse. Order settlement basically means we settle our order. So that basically means now we are good, we manufacture and then we do the settlement and that is called order settlement. This is a different uh, type of uh, production planning master data which is there in SAP. So first and foremost, uh, if you look at here, right inside, there is some uh, organization unit. Organization unit to represent internal structure of the company. So that is called uh, organization uh, structures, right? And uh, apart from uh, that organization structure, where you have a company code, plant, and all that you have to define. So that is called organization structure. And then apart from uh, organized structure, then we, we have certain other master data. You see that production planning master data, basic data in which the first and foremost, you have to define work centers, work centers. Work center basically define that what kind of manufacturing you will be doing where. That is, that, that is part of your work centers. You have to define different work centers. Routing or recipe so you have to define if you're doing manufacturing then what is your route i'm going to do this and then this then we're going to do this activity then you're going to do this activity so that is called routing and if you have this process industry then it is called recipe and then next one is the bill of material bill of material basically means uh, you need to have an entire bomb bill of material construct done many times you have a single label bomb and you can have a multi-label bomb also. Multi-label bomb basically means that uh, you can have a different type of bill of material 
which could be required. So that is why it is called multi-level norm. Production planning life cycle in which uh, we do MRP. So this is MRP. MRP go to the product planned order. We, we can, or planned order can go to my purchase requisition. If I'm buying uh, my external item, this is production planning life cycle. If I'm buying from outside, then you can do production order, release production order, do the goods issue of the components uh, from warehouse to production. Then you confirmation of those items, you receive the product, and then you do the settlement. So this become your process. And then you can create production order. You can create production order with planned order. You can create without planned order. You, when you're creating production order, you can create manually. You can create production order automatically. So in different fashion and different ways, you can create your production order. Now, production order confirmation. Now, production order confirmation is actually very much the last step. So in the whole process of manufacturing, uh, so that is basically the production order confirmation. In the production order confirmation, we can have a you know, confirmation of actual item. Confirmation means if I say I'm going to take four hours, did I take four hours or more or less? I said I'm going to require component A. 10 pieces, I can require 10 quantity or more or less. That is called confirmation. And eventually that confirmation you can enter manually. That confirmation can come from your other external sources also. And then when you do the confirmation, that is very much is the last activity from the production order perspective. And then from the good movement perspective, so there is a receipt, there's an issue, the first issue. So from the warehouse, we send the component out. See that from the warehouse, component going out. So this is warehouse, this is production order. So from the warehouse, we are sending the components to the production order. And then from production, my products are coming to warehouse. So outbound, in component get issued and finished good, come back. And then in the last, you have production order uh, cost. So you have a different material. That is your cost. That is called material cost. Then you have different operations. That is called internal activity cost. So that is coming from operations and cost centers. You can calculate your overheads and cumulative sum of your material cost, your internal cost, your, your uh, work center cost, your operational cost, and that become your production order cost one of the element of the production order, one of the uses, but not the function, one of the output of production order is basically calculating the cost. Okay, This is the integration we talked about. Customer comes up, he give me order, that become my demand, that go to sales forecast, then sales forecast go to production planning. Production planning actually create production order, from the production order, we do a production order receipt. Then we calculate production costs. It integrated financial controlling. And if you need component, it goes to the vendor. And this is wonderful. This is the power of integration where all these different functions are seamlessly integrated. See how many functions are integrated here. This is the whole cycle. Sales is starting from customer. Sales module, materials management production planning, forecasting, production, warehouse management, finance, controlling, vendor. Multiple modules are seamlessly integrated with each other in order to accomplish the whole process. So PP, module integrated with the sales and distribution, integrated with the material management, integrated with quality management, Integrate with the controlling because there's a cost. So all these different integration happens. Okay, so here, um, so a little bit about our training. So how does this thing happen? So 
uh, we make it. So SAP step one is the training happens Saturday, Sunday, about 70, 80 hours. So lecture time, you're going to get training material in PDF form. Training class will be recorded. Video will be provided. Training assignment, homework will be provided. You get SAP system access for one year. I'm teaching forever 25 million years. Um, once your training is done, we also provide assessment services if you want. So we also help you in the mock interview assignment. If you want, you can attend our course for one year. There's no additional fees. So we allow everybody to attend our class one year. And after that is step number three. We help in the region preparation, marketing, placement. We help in the development of resume. We market and get placement. And then we do on-job support to all people. I also have a channel uh, in which, um, so if I open, so. On SAP Espohana. So, so this is my channel. It is in my name called Dilip Saad. And um, if you see here, so they have different videos and different topics. So you're very welcome to watch different videos on my channel. Okay, this is uh, my email address, uh, if you want. So you can make a note of my email address, uh, Dilip Dsad at mythinktree.com. Um, and then this is the phone number, 973-885-7245, okay? So this is my phone number, and you are very welcome to make a note, call me, email me, etc., etc., etc. Okay. So thank you, everyone. So Raja, thank you. Varun, thank you. Sunil, thank you. Jia, thank you. Sagar, thank you. Vishal, thank you. Satish, thank you. Prasanna, thank you. Anuradha, thank you. Kiri, thank you. Syam, thank you. And Bindia, thank you. And uh, you are very welcome to call me, email me, WhatsApp me. Um, on my number and uh, thank you Sagar and I really appreciate you coming um, and um, I will call you as well so next few I think many of you uh, I have spoken to and probably some of you I have not so next few days I will be calling you uh, and uh, you can call me as well and so we can have a detailed conversation about your questions, etc. Um, it is dsad at mythinktree.com uh, and my number 973-885-7245. If you are out of country, if you are not in the US, so this is US number. So you know this is US number. And um, and then you know you're very welcome to call me in this number. Um, thank you very much and uh, I really appreciate when the which I will let you know Sagar I think uh, we'll uh, start shortly probably next week uh, we'll start Great session. Thank you, Jia. Thank you. Thank you for kind words, Jia. Thank you, everyone. And I really appreciate you guys joining and coming to this session. Thank you, Sunil. Thank you, everyone. So thank you. Um, I really appreciate you all coming to the session. And uh, I'm looking forward to talking to you. I'm sure each one of you have questions. We will have a detailed conversation, uh, 101. And um, this is, uh, I'm sure each one of number is already there. Many of you have already spoken, probably not all of you. And, um, but you are welcome to call me, email me as well. 
dsad at mythinkty.com. My number is 973-885-7245. If you're out of country, out of US, then you should know this is a US number. You can still call me on WhatsApp because this number is also on WhatsApp. So with that, I think I will conclude this session. Uh, and um, should I call you or you will call me? Either way is fine, Sunil. You can call me also tomorrow. And uh, I will call everybody anyways, but you are well, very welcome. Um, I reach office around 10, 10.30, and I'm there in office till 6, 6.30. So anytime between 10, 10.30 to 6, 6.30, you're very welcome to call me. Okay. So I reach um, uh, office around 10, 10.30. Um, as I mentioned, I don't do any work work, means I'm not, I, I don't work, so I'm available. So during the day between 10.30 to 6.30, um, you know, anybody can call me. If I'm other call or whatever, leave me voicemail and I will call you back. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you very much. I really appreciate you, you all coming here in this session. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Please take care. Good night.